all Gigafactories after eight months side by side. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Last month, I broke it down by time from groundbreaking, time from first footings, and time from first vertical columns, and we didn't see much difference. So this month, I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way. Time from groundbreaking. After eight months of progress, the three sites could not look more different. Giga Shanghai, the smallest of the sites by far, was basically done. At least that's how it looked from the outside. The roofs were up, the walls were up, the interior work was well underway, and as messy as it may have appeared outside, the factory was basically finished. They were busy inside dialing in the works to make production happen. I mean, at this point, Giga Shanghai was just two months from trial production and four months to their first customer deliveries. Though it should be noted that early Shanghai production relied heavily on parts imported from Fremont to complete their vehicles. Hey, could you do me a favor real quick? Hit that subscribe button, because if I hit a thousand thumbs in the upward direction, I'm going to give away something to someone who leaves a comment below next week. So also, I don't know, <laughs> I guess, I guess also leave a comment so you're entered into it too. Some added caveats here being that Giga Shanghai was the smallest of the three factories by a substantial margin, as I showed in painful detail in the six-month side-by-side -side video. It had a smaller footprint, fewer second and third floor areas, and was overall easier to build. Take that win in stride, though because the Shanghai Phase 2 rocked some serious bootay and did so with a greater footprint and a massively taller structure. Giga Berlin, the most medium of the sites, assuming that's a thing, was looking pretty good at the eight-month mark. They had the double whammy setbacks of hibernating bats, which slowed the felling of trees, followed immediately by the pandemic outbreak delay, but they've still managed to march along fantastically. Giga Berlin was a vastly larger site than Giga Shanghai, and instead of using cheap and easy steel construction on pilings, uh, they had to use primarily heavy concrete, most of which was brought in by the on-site rail yard. They also had to use a floating raft foundation, which is way more complicated, costly, and time-consuming than simply driving the piles into the ground, since those could have interfered with the local water table. The progress visible at the eight-month mark in Berlin was acceptable at worst, until you consider the scale and complexity of the project, at which point it was nothing short of amazing. There were a lot of roof areas and tons of other spaces that were still not entirely closed off to the elements, but enough were done that they were able to go full speed on outfitting the site from within. And while we are still awaiting confirmation of how well that's done, it certainly looked to have gone well. At the very least, we can say with certainty that the interior crew was not left in a lurch by any of the exterior uh, construction crews. Though if I'm being honest, Giga's Berlin and Texas are nearing a neck-and-neck -neck race to reach trial production, since Texas seems to have massively up to their game. Giga Texas at eight months. Well, if you're watching this, I imagine I don't have to tell you, but they were rocking along nicely. The site has over 80% of their footings done, over 50% of the framing done, and over 40% of it is already covered by the first layer of roofs. If you don't believe me, 
or just want to double check my math, check out my weekly Giga Texas Progress Math Tracker for super in-depth information on all of that. But I assure you, this site is moving along very quickly. Despite a lack of walls in Giga Texas, they're already installing the Giga Press and the paint line and have hundreds of assembly robots waiting in cargo containers for their big day. The biggest thing with Texas is that it moves so quickly from week to week. And if you don't believe me, you know, click on my channel and watch a few videos to see what I'm talking about. So let me know in the comments which of these three sites you think is really and truly in first place. And please know that by doing so, you're automatically entered into the drawing to win a prize at the end of the month, which will be given out uh, at the end of the first weekly news roundup of April. You can enter just by subscribing or leaving a comment. And there's a second prize that will be given to one of my Patreons, of whom there are only 40 at present. Imagine that, having a 1 in 41 odds of winning a prize as of today, plus you. So, I mean, that's pretty cool, right? So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me an earload in the comments and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots in the mega yachts for all future, where us shareholders look increasingly likely to live. This is not investment advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I do your own research. Also, a huge thanks to Fly Brandenburg for use of this photograph uh, that appeared at the top and I guess bottom of the video.